to everyone. And thank you for the report, Ashley. Okay, looking ahead then to the second quarter CFO report by the CFO. More finance for you guys. Um, so let's start with the uh, quarterly CFO report. Well, what, what I'll touch here is an update on revenues, how we're doing the budget, what we think our guidance is for the re remaining of the year, and lastly, we'll do a pri uh, city council priority funding um, update on the projects that we're uh, staff's recommending. So let's start with the revenue and the table on the left. And I'm, I know I present this all the time, but we have new city council members and for the public, I'll describe what the information is on the table. This table has a January to June tax revenue. So on the top left, we have the, the sales tax revenue, which is composed of first and second penny. Uh, those are your mainly sales tax operation driven. Third penny is the tourism uh, re, uh, tax. And then we have the bid or pillow tax, which is a fee that the city receives uh, for, ho for hotels. So then we list the property tax. Um, so for sales tax, first and second penny, uh, the first column is your budget. The second column is your prorated. That means historically where we were at the end of, of June. And that's what we compare to the actuals, which is your third column. Your fourth column in yellow is the difference of your actuals versus the prorated budget. So for the first penny, for example, the way to read it is you are $53,000 above budget or at a surplus or 1.6%. So first and second penny um, on a cash basis, we are outperforming um, the budget by 1.6%. Third penny, unfortunately, is not the same story. If you read it, we're about 13.7% year to date or $64,000 negative. The bid pillow tax, it's about $30,000 or 26.3% negative. Um, I want to move to the chart on the right, and that, and that just compares how we were versus last year. So um, in comparison, we are 2.6% below last year at this point of time, but we are, the good news is that we're 0.2 above budget. Um, now there's a caveat with this data, and it's, um, I guess we were lucky enough that in a, in a bad timing, we received a settlement of $144,000 for previous periods which uh, dates back to 2014 and, uh, and 17, and we'd receive this cash. So if we strip this cash, these numbers have that, this $144,000. So the real kind of like economic activity, tax revenue would be 4.6% lower than last year and 1.8% below budget. Um, lastly, property tax right now, we're at 6.4% above budget. Uh, the next big, uh, uh, cash uh, that we will receive, it's, it's in October. Um, so altogether, uh, our taxes are about 1.3% on a cash basis higher than budget. Since uh, we're in a COVID um, phase and I, uh, we believe it was important to give you a little bit more information on well, how has tax been performing in, on a quarterly basis. So top left, your table shows the collections. This means this includes the $144,000 settlement received and as you can see, our first quarter, year over year, we're, we were about 1% um, below last year. Remember that March, uh, the end of March, we had a little bit of COVID effect. And versus budget, we were about 1.9% on a prorated basis. Second quarter, with this settlement, we're at 4.3% uh, negative or $160,000. But versus budget, we are actually outperforming it by 2.5%. Uh, now, we look at the adjusted, uh, which shows the, the true economic performance. The difference is in the second quarter is that we would be at 8.2% negative or 1.7% below budget. Um, now, this doesn't look good, but it, do, it is better than expected. And it's better if you compare it to the national average performance. Uh, the latest estimate that we received for GDP uh, decrease was about 33%. Um, and the Midwest economy index is actually close at minus nine in June. So, we're more in line with the Midwest Economic Index. We're outperforming it, and we're outperforming the, the uh, national average as well. Any questions on revenue? All right. So moving on to expenses. How are we doing against budget? So on the top left, again, we, we look at the expenditures by department, what we had budgeted, the prorated in a, in a straight line budget. That means since we're at June, it's 50% of your budget, um, your actuals. And then blue, uh, it's favorable. Black is unfavorable compared to the 50%. And then you move on to the percentage use. We have some departments that are unfavorable to budget. 
most of them are the city attorneys due to the litigation case um, with the county. Um, the other departments are just uh, timing of payments. We, we expect those to smoothen throughout the year. They were just upfront expenses. In the case of finance was the audit expense um, that we just finalized and so we paid for it upfront. Um, overall, if we move all the way to the bottom, the, we are uh, performing at 42.9% uh, of budget or, or have a surplus of 1.3 um, when we compare it to the approved budget. Um, if we move on to the right, to the top uh, uh, of, the, of the page, uh, we see the CIP uh, projects at 13.7% of usage. Uh, the heavy activity is happening during this time, so we expect that to catch up as we go through the year, although we did reduce uh, the expense on those as well. And then all their revenue, all, all their expenses are about 30% of, of budget. So in total, um, the city is at 31.4% usage of the budget or 10.7 millions of favorability. Any questions? All right. Moving on to the Swiftel Center, and I'm hoping Tom and his staff is here just um, in case you have any more questions. As a reminder, this was requested that staff presented a quarterly update to see how, we're, how the Swiftel Center is performing. Uh, the, the top left is the PNL year to date as well. And uh, the important thing uh, here is, well, how are we doing financially? So the year-to-day actual, you see at a net income loss of $202,000 compared to a budget that w was estimated to be at $179,000 uh, at a deficit um, originally. So this means that they are running currently at $23,000 uh, at a deficit versus the budget. Um, this amount does take into consideration the $264,000 SBA loan that they receive mainly to pay for payroll and utilities as well for this year. But it's also important to highlight that they were not able to have any events during uh, the second quarter. Um, and so instead, they've been trying to help out uh, doing different activities for the community. Um, and they're, they're, for example, they're delivering over 4,000 meals in the ICAP uh, program for, the, for their 60 plus dining program. And as um, the things are reopening, they've been slightly booking more events um, so hopefully the third quarter will, will bring some revenue in for, for the center. Um, w they're also working on, on showing or, or estimating how they're going to end at the end of the year. Um, we're hoping to have that information this month, so we will be sharing uh, with you uh, where we think we're going to end uh, financially for the Swiftel Center this year. Any questions on Swiftel? Sure. Eric, uh, I... I thank you and Tom and everybody that put this together because this is what we've been wanting and needing. And like you said, unfortunately, because of COVID, this is reflecting something way more than typical. Would we be able to look at a previous years just so we could get a feel now that we're seeing the breakdown? Uh, I just think it would really help us sure. um, because this isn't, a good reflection for them because of COVID. It's, you know, um, they've lost a full quarter's worth of revenue. So thank you. Sure. I can definitely bring that in. Do you think one or two years going back? I don't know if anybody else has any feeling. I Just for me, at least one typical mm -hmm. year would, okay. would be good. Council Member Brink. I was going to ask, too, I'm uh, commending you for helping out with the uh, United Way meals and the ICAP system. I just wondered if there's any kind of budget impact to the operations of the Swift Health Center in, in doing that service for the community or how that's reflected. Yes, I'll let Tom answer that. He's off to that side. Good evening. I think I heard your question, Leah. Um, was there any revenue impact from the ICAP meals? Or just how is that service that you're providing being reflected in your budget, if at all? Yeah, it is, but it was pretty minimal. But yes, there was income. And, and it kept our kitchen active, you know, for two of those three months. So it was kind of a lifeline and great thing for us to be able to help out. Okay, so, so revenue received for the meals being provided and then you paid staff to, to create the meals and deliver. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Any other Councilman Collins? Yeah, so is there any way to tell uh, 
their last event that they had. I think we talked about this before, Paul. But is there any way to tell how that impacted our community with like the hotels and things like that uh, during it, the? It, uh, and that is a hundred million dollar question. And I think that given COVID, if there's one good thing that we can get out of it is that it kind of isolates the Suftel Center having events and, and then we can start measuring the impact if we see that in, in 3B and bid taxes. So um, we actually had a meeting today and we're gonna work um, this month and next month to look at, at that and, and hopefully uh, engaging also uh, the um, Chamber and the Visitors Bureau to come up with a method to estimate that. Okay. And just to add to that, so council, so council and the public know that a lot of those revenue sources are a month and sometimes two months lagging. It just depends on the revenue source. So we're gonna have to take that into consideration. So probably looking later this fall before we can have some answers for you. But Eric's exactly right. The one benefit to COVID is that we can isolate different revenues. Uh, one other thing that we have done, uh, we've surveyed the participants of the Simital and the Charlet shows and we've gotten great um, return on the surveys. And so we're compli compiling that information now and uh, Along with what Eric mentioned, um, see it, the Visit Brookings, their formulas that they use, um, and we're also surveying um, uh, and requesting testimonial letters from businesses in the community that were impacted. Um, so there's five or six things that we're gonna try to pull together and then we, we want to give a report to you on those events that occurred in July, but that's the third quarter. Hopefully, at the in three months from now, we'll we'll uh, be giving that to you. Councilman Collins, from when I went out there in the tour that day and the uh, event was going on, I thought you did a wonderful job uh, organizing that and getting everything together. I know a lot of people just walking by us would stop and tell you how great of a job you were doing. So I really appreciate that. So. Yeah, and I didn't pay any of those people, but it was crazy when we were on that tour how many people would unsolicited come up and thank me because they saw me welcome them or something to the event, and it went wonderfully. They were very, very big events for us to pull off, but our community, our staff, and the facilities of not only the Center, but the Larson Ice Center, uh, all we received for all three of those uh, groups were positive comments and I got another one today and I got one from a business today that their business they were expecting to be down 20 percent in the month of July one of our restaurants and in fact they were up 30 percent so that was a 50 percent swing uh, just because they were projecting to be down because of all the other activities that weren't happening so we were kind of in a bubble, those three events, so we hope we capture enough information to really show the impact of the events that are, are occurring out there. So we're hoping we'll be able to bring that back to you here in a couple months. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Well, moving on to our general guidance uh, for, for the remaining of the year. So as a reminder, last quarter I presented, well, it was actually a video that didn't come here and present, but we developed, the uh, city leadership developed a 10-step plan uh, where we would manage our budget, reduce our expenses to be able to keep uh, key services for our citizens. So this plan included about $125,000 reduction of cost, cost in the general fund, $1.4 million reduction in our CIP projects that were non-critical. The Swift Hill Center was, budget was reduced by $1.17 um, million in operating expense, um, as well as our agency partners for economic development, uh, they, their budgets were reduced by $202,000, which represents around 15.3%. So looking forward, um, given recent macro and local economic factors, as well as engaging different um, uh, people in the community that know about this subject, we've revised our guidance. So our first and second penny guidance uh, went from 30% contraction to now we're believing, um, we think that it's a good estimate to go about 8% contraction. Contraction. Our 3B, um, it still reflected some weaknesses. We, uh, we had forecast there around 50 to 60 contraction. We've reduced it to 40% contraction. And our bid and hotel, we had estimated 70% contraction, and now we're down to 60% contraction so far. Um, our city staff also 
came together and estimated the rest of the revenues. Remember the taxes around 40 to 45 percent, but we also get a lot of fees and interest income, and we came up with an updated uh, budget, um, an updated estimate of where we're going to end up at the end of the year. So the table below shows that the general fund and the, CA, and the CIP fund with the revenue expectation and the current expe expenses reduced uh, will we'll be at a surplus. The general fund, we're thinking we're going to end up at a $400,000 surplus um, versus current approved budget, and the CIP fund about, about $1 million surplus. So what we're going to do, um, staff will uh, re reconvene, and we're going to discuss on um, prioritize which projects can we bring back to still d uh, deliver those um, services to our citizens. Um, we're going to prioritize based on uh, uh, stimulating the local economy as well as uh, critical services for our, for our citizens. Unfortunately, the 3B and BID funds are projected to come at a deficit. 3B around 143,000 and bid tax around 101,000. We may need to use reserves right now um, if, if we end up like that to offset that um, deficit. Both funds have currently the reserves to offset that, those amounts if needed. Any questions on our guidance? All right, and lastly, the City Council Priority Project List update. Um, uh, now that Ashley communicated that audit is closed, we don't. Uh, we believe that uh, we have a good number to estimate our unassigned liquid assets to fund the projects. So the the report shows 8.2 million dollars. We close in 2019. Then we take our uh, GNE reserves uh, of about 2.5 million dollars and 847 dollars, uh, which leaves us with 4.8 million dollars of of city council priority funding available for the, for the projects. Um, the next table below shows the approved projects uh, and we have the indoor reg, the footback, and the interchange. The, the, uh, the interchange has actually been taken action by city council. So if we subtract that from our, from our variable ba balance, we end up at $2.8 million of availability for the remaining of the projects. Now we're switching to the right uh, then staff suggests the primary project funding, which includes the facility improvements for 2020, 2021, and 2022. These are the results of McKinstry study, um, and they were suggested, and they are in our CIP plan along with the, with the revenue from, from this priority funding as well. Um, the remaining of the primary projects are the parks master plan and the downtown master plan. The total of unapproved primary projects at, are 2.7 million. So the, the surplus after factoring uh, primary projects, it's about $109,000. Then staff, we have a list of secondary projects, and these are just uh, as an FYI in case we priorities change or we get more availability of funds. Any questions on, on this update? Sure. Also on the brink. So if I'm understanding this correctly, you're proposing proposal is that we move these facility improvements into our approved projects list. Can you remind me what some of those facility improvements are? I don't know if you have that detail. Sure. Um, and this was presented, uh, when was that? It was last year. Um, Matt presented it at the, and, and he, it was all the McKinstry okay. findings. I know that the 2020 facility improvements include a boiler for the library and a um, and a heater for the Lars Nice Arena. The uh, 2021, 2022, it's a list of 30. We can definitely let you know. Okay. But they're, they're just uh, the critical uh, projects that McShane Street said that needed to be done by that year to keep our, our facilities going. Mm -hmm. But we can definitely um, send you the information again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. That's helpful. I I won't speak for anyone else, but I know for me, I would I would prioritize our ability to maintain our existing structures and facilities over adding a new structure like the indoor rec center. So I would I would actually think of that a little bit differently myself. Assistant City Manager, do you have a comment? I was prepared for that question during the budget workshop, so I'm excited to uh, provide some insight. Great. <laughs> uh, going into 2021, almost actually more than half of that, about $800,000 is for the library alone. So that's where we have our large-scale HVAC repairs, 
um, and some indoor patchwork and things of that nature. So over half of that is that. Um, we did budget a little bit for emergency repairs of the police facility to get us by. Uh, Larson Park parking lot was in that as well and uh, some smaller projects. But the vast majority of it is the library. Uh, I am drawing a blank on 2022, but it is those larger scale like HVAC uh, type repairs. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. All right, that's it. So yeah, if you have any questions, you know where to find me and it, this will also be on our website. Thank you.